Welcome to our BNI Talks webinar. My name is Steve Tenuzzo. I am your host. And today I've got my business coach herself, Nancy Cantor, returning to talk about something dear and dear to you, TLC, teamwork, leadership, and communication, that is. Uh, and as you can see on the, uh, the back of Nancy's uh, photo there, she's got TLC on her little image there under her logo. So uh, this is a good one if you're interested in building a community, which is kind of Nancy's specialty. And so Nancy, why don't you take it away and talk a little bit about yourself, your business and BNI. Okay, so I have to say thank you to Steve. Thank you for having me here today. There are benefits to being Steve's business coach. <laughs> um, you know, I have been a business coach for, I'm going into my 29th year. I'm part of BNI since 1998. And it, during the process of being a business coach, I had somebody who um, said to me, we just had a group and she said, oh, it was so fabulous. Why do you think it was so fabulous? And she said, well, it was only women. And I had never thought of that before. So um, that was part of the impetus of creating the Dream Factory community, which is an empowerment community for women. And it's definitely working on entrepreneurial thinking. And recently, I've just opened it up to men, which is pretty exciting for me. Um, and let's see, what else? I've just become the mentor coordinator um, for my TCOB chapter, taking care of business here in Massachusetts outside of Boston. So I love BNI. It's been such a great um, support structure for me. And I love all the people that I connect to through BNI. So today is a great opportunity for that. So in my coaching, I have to say, I've worked with several different models of, you know, what does it take to uh, create a business and how to be more successful. And I have to say, in starting the Dream Factory, the reason I called a Dream Factory community is that I realized that community is so important for people living their dreams. It could be personal, it could be professional, and I focus a lot on those business dreams. Like, what's the kind of business you really want to create for yourself? Um, so we can go to the next slide, Steve. All right. Uh, before we go jump into this, uh, folks, we're going to be asking a lot of questions that you're going to be writing into the chat. So if there's a question that Nancy poses to you, and since our polls are down, uh, you'll use the chat for that. If you have specific questions that you want to ask, put those in the Q&A section. All right, let's go. Okie doke. As soon as I can advance a slide. There we go. Okay, good. So one of the things that I came up with, and I used it for the Dream Factory, but I also want to say I've used it in corporate situations, and now there's going to be men that are involved in the Dream Factory. So it's not gender specific, but I started thinking like, well, what makes a difference for people creating what they want? And I kind of coined a phrase called being a chief dream officer. And being a chief dream officer just means you have a proactive approach for taking on your life, your work, in your world. And I also, to further clarify, I say that CDOs are visionaries, organizer, self-transformers, and community leaders. And this simple model, it really is a simple model, but as most things that are simple, they're not necessarily easy. Um, you know, I train people in this because it actually helps people to fulfill on the things that they want. And so it's very important to have the vision, get organized around it, be um, smart about how you transform the things that you do that don't enable you to succeed. But a key element that we're gonna talk about today is your community leader for the vision that you have. You know, and it could be a vision for a business. You want your business to get bigger. You want your business to be more successful and more profitable. Or maybe you want to start a business. I know here in BNI, most people have started a business already, but it takes people around you to really support you in doing what you intend. So I'm just going to go through these four categories and clarify them a little bit so it's a model that you can use for the aspirations that you have. All right, so the first part is being a visionary. And all that means is seeing something, be, I mean, that's not all it means, but a, a simple way of looking at it is just seeing something beyond what you already know. Like I know when I first started working with Steve, he had thought for, he, he was pretty clear that he really wanted to create a business. He had been working in a printing company and he had always wanted to create a copywriting business. So, I mean, the skill sets that he used daily 
or the skill sets that he would have in creating a business. But the vision really changed. Like, I want to have a business. So the vision changed, but the purpose and who he was didn't. He always had the skill set that he wanted to apply. And then having a vision of creating a business gave him a new game to play. And that's kind of how it works. You have something in your mind, your purpose and consistent throughout your life. It's your skills, your assets, your, you know, the kinds of qualities that you value um, stay the same. Like who you are is who you are. Wherever you go, there you are. But your vision can change. And that's where sometimes it gets tricky because you have to learn and grow in order to fulfill on the things that you want to change. Your purpose stays the same. Your vision does change. And, you know, now they say people change their careers, you know, it could be six times in a lifetime, maybe 20 times in a lifetime. Like people have new visions. And that's where sometimes people need support in how do they fulfill on the new vision that they have. Even though who they are stays the same, what they want might change. So having a vision is really important. If you don't know where you're going, nobody else can help you or nobody else can help you, which is very consistent with BNI. If you don't have a really good weekly presentation so people are really clear where you're going, what your vision is, it's really hard to get up underneath you. So being a vision and being a visionary and having a vision are the first step. So that's it. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. And by the way, um, it really, <laughs> your vision really does change because when I started, I didn't really know what I was doing, which is why I sought out Nancy in the first place uh, to begin a business. But as your life changes and things changes, your priorities change and your vision changes. But really, I still have the same idea for what I wanted for the business. Yeah. And what's exciting is like at different steps along the way, you had to change and grow in order to go to the next step. Correct. And you've done a great job with that. So it's always been a pleasure working with you. All right, next slide, please. Here we go. All right, so you have your vision. So you translate that it, the vision into a tangible strategic plan. And it can be as simple as goals and actions. I know sometimes people go, oh, that's so simple. But for a lot of people, it's not the easiest thing in the world. And it's something that you wanna work on regularly you know, and have present for you. Um, you know, you set your goals. It could be, now people have been asking me a lot about this lately. Should you have 10 year goals? Should you have five year, you know, five year plan, 10 year plan, one year plan. And a lot of times people like to set up the 10 year plan. And I've worked with people that have done that and we've checked back and some people I've worked with that long and it is pretty amazing how people move forward, even if they're not completely focused on what a 10 year plan might look like, but just doing that thinking gets your mind geared in a particular way, you know, 10 year, five year, one year, and that you have goals associated with that. And that, you know, I also believe accountability is really important that you also have a one year plan, but that every month you really work on specific goals and have at least a monthly check in with an accountability partner, somebody you set up. I mean, of course, they say, oh, a coach would be great, you know, because they can help you in the places you get stuck, but you can create your own accountability partner. That's part of building the community is that there's somebody that's actually listening to you. And I was just on a webinar recently and somebody was sharing about listening. Like, isn't that a privilege to have somebody listen to you? Like your vision and your intentions is so important that somebody would really listen to you. Maybe they give you direction, maybe they don't give you direction, but even the simple process of having somebody really listen to you has you take yourself even more seriously and helps you to move forward. So I highly recommend looking at, you know, the sequencing you want to do. Some people say, oh, I can't do 10 years. I can only do one year. If you can only do a week, do a week, figure out what works for you, but also get some level of accountability that helps you move forward. Having people that listen to you and take what you're doing seriously is definitely part of creating that community of support that you need. Yeah, Nancy, speaking of accountability partners, maybe you can speak to this a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I've had different kinds of different people who have been accountability partners for me, and some of them are very supportive, but they don't necessarily give you the honest feedback that you need in an accountability partner. So could you yeah. actually talk a little bit about that? Well, I think you have to tell what tell your accountability partner what you need. Like some people do just want to be listened to, and in the process of being listened to, they can figure out their next steps. 
Yeah. Some people want a little bit of coaching or feedback. Like, how does this sound to you? You know, is it, does this sound true? Am I on the right track here? And it's great to get that feedback, but I think it's important as the person having the accountability partner that you get very clear what you want. Some people are making promises, like I will get this done by next week. And you want an accountability who's gonna help you hold yourself accountable to the promises that you made. For other people, that's completely annoying and that isn't what they're looking for. There's gotta be some combination of those versions. You know, where you take yourself seriously, make promises and somebody can support you in moving forward. Yeah, I think it's such an important thing. I'm wondering, you can just jump into the chat and let me know if you have an accountability partner right now. Or did you used to have one and it, it didn't work out or you've had one for years? I know that, um, We've had, uh, we had two uh, members who are now retired in BNI who were their accountability partners for many years um, in our, our BNI Marlboro chapter. And uh, they would, you know, meet once a week and, and go over what they were talking about in their business and, you know, pretty incredible uh, to do that. Yeah. Well, I think in BNI people have power teams, you know, yep. where you really get on board to really move things forward with referrals and things like that. But you can also use accountability for other things. Mm -hmm. You know, there's definitely internal things within your business that if you did them would make your life a lot better. You know, one of the things in the groups that I used to lead, I remember doing this with you, Steve, is and Ivan Meisner talks about on one of his um, podcasts is doing an organizational chart. Even if you're the only person who's in your business, you think about who who is actually in charge of what? Like where's, you know, somebody's a financial manager, somebody is in charge of operations, you know, that type of thing. And um, it's very helpful in distinguishing the roles within a business. An accountability partner could be really helpful in saying, hey, you know, you've got a lot of accounts receivable. Have you scheduled your finance manager to work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Does that work? Well, <laughs> I can't let this comment go by. So Santini says, I have one, and he beats me up every week, Mondays 11 to 2. Okay. That is a long beat up session there. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, things are working out well for you with that. That could be addressed in another webinar, yep. I think, <laughs> what that is and why that's happening. But, um, you know, <laughs> you know, honestly, you tell your accountability partner what you need. If you need to be beat up and yeah. it works, stick with it. Yes. Not that we condone violence. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Just, uh, yeah. We're, we're condoning success and whatever is yes. successful. That's it. But what I do like is that I'm hearing uh, some people talking about uh, different people who are um, their accountability partners, whether they're in their life, uh, you know, a, a spouse could be a great accountability partner as, as well as someone that you work with. Absolutely. When you start thinking about your community of support, it is everywhere if you imagine it to be, you know, if that's how you look at things, your perspective has everything to do with how life occurs and the resources that you glean for yourself in your business. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, self-transformer. If you want something to be, I'm just going to read it because I think this makes sense. If you want something better, bigger, or different, you have to be willing to take on your own personal growth to accomplish your goals. Um, so I want to say something about that. I mean, your business is the perfect readout of where you're at. I mean, your life is a perfect readout of where you're at. It just tells you the truth. If you want something to be different and, you know, go beyond more prosperous, you know, bigger business, more prosperous, you know, more, um, prosperous business, um, smaller business, sell your business, start a business, whatever, you know, whatever category you're in that you envision something, you have to realize that it's not as easy as just having that idea. You have to grow and develop into it because you're not there yet. Because if you were there, you'd have exactly what you, what you say that you want. So you just have to realize that it's going to take some personal growth. And like with development, Sometimes it's a little tricky. It's not just getting more information because information is important, but you really have to be willing to grow yourself. And that takes interest. It's not just listening to somebody else giving you information. It's like having insight, like, oh, I'm like this. I need to be more like that. And then being able to act on it. So if you think about it, it really has a lot to do with sabotage. We have certain ways of being that sometimes service and sometimes don't. 
And like what we were saying before, things change. Like your upside becomes your could become your downside. For me, I'm very entrepreneurial and I'm very self-generating. But as your business grows, you have to be more involved with relationships and partnerships and all kinds of things where you delegate. You know, so it's like just doing it yourself isn't necessarily the keys to the kingdom and could be the thing that sabotages you. So you wanna know, like you can look for yourself, how do you sabotage yourself? And you can put it in the chat and be insightful for yourself. Just, you know, don't do the party line, but what is it that you do that gets in your way of success? And Steve, you'll let me know what some of those are. Yeah. People are writing, people are writing. Uh, ah, see, Avery, this is a good one. I have a hard time asking for help. Yeah, okay. Bruce talks about a uh, better focus. Um, you fail to nice. follow your own schedule. I don't yeah. think have to, oh my goodness, that would never happen. Yes, of course that happens. Procrastination is one that many of us fight with. Confusion. Yep. Taking action. Yep. Uh, not sticking to the calendar, of course. Taking the foot off the gas, right? Yep. I think that's a common one, right? Where people say, well, everything's going great. I'm really busy. And then you kind of, you don't keep looking to build. You just kind of work in the business instead of on it. Maybe that's yeah, what exactly. Yeah. Well, I think that sometimes people are as afraid of success as they are of failure. You would think people would be really afraid of failure. And, and, and some people are, but people are also afraid of success. And the thing about procrastination, procrastination is the biggest way that people sabotage themselves. And they have all kinds of things in their head of like why they're not moving forward. They like to talk about it, but they don't do it. But I honestly mm -hmm. think at the heart of procrastination is fear. It's wonderful to see possibilities, have visions, but it's another thing to actually get on the court and do them. You know, talk about having a business. That could be a thing that you think about for many years, but it's a lot more comfortable thinking about it than it is actually doing it because it takes work. So know? the question is, nothing. the question uh, in the chat here, how do I overcome the fear of success and why do I feel like this? Well, I, I don't have enough time to delve into. I mean, why you feel about that, there's a lot of work that could go into why you feel that way. And I'm not diminishing it at all. Cause it, you know, when you feel that way, you feel that way. I'm gonna give you guys something really simple though of what you can do about this. Because if you say I'm a procrastinator, that, it, you know, like the world follows what you say. So if you're determined, you're afraid of success, you're a procrastinator, I, if it, it goes too fast, I put my, I take my foot off the gas, people will tell you all kinds of ways that they are. And that's good that you're insightful that you have done those behaviors from time to time. But you want to identify these things as behaviors that you do from time to time. Here, here's the tip. If you can catch yourself procrastinating, actually catch yourself and you go, oh my goodness, I'm procrastinating. And you don't take it seriously. It's just something you're doing. And then you have to come up with, like what's an alternative of what you could apply when you notice, you notice that you're procrastinating. You want to step forward, take a step forward. You're not destined to procrastinate for the rest of your life. If you notice it and you say, oh my goodness, that's what I do to sabotage myself. What I could do, is take a step forward and you start practicing that. Here's the thing, either these things could have you or you could have them. And this is bringing a consciousness to the way that you behave. And, and if you can notice it, that means you have it instead of it having you. If you determine you are a certain way and there's no hope of doing anything different, it's got you completely. What I'm saying is you can work with your mind to identify it and shift over to a new behavior. Wow. That was pretty powerful. Yeah, I think a lot of people are, are realizing that. Um, Avery says, this is what I want to do from business. I help people identify what their saboteurs are and help them overcome them. So that's great. Yeah, I mean, that's the keys to the kingdom. And somebody's consciousness, how you 
how you see things and how you apply yourself to the world makes a huge difference. And that's what, you know, it's very helpful. And that's where a community of support could come in. Even if people know what you do to sabotage yourself you, you, and you have that community around you, you stop doing it because they catch you doing it and you go, oh, I just yeah. have to shift over here. And they go, yeah, shift over here, just do it. And you go, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then if you're procrastinating, you go, well, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> you don't do that. We're not going to do that. So. But you have uh, two fans in Anita and Tina who say uh, that was very powerful. And can you speak every week? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we can talk. Put your name in. If you want to be in touch with me, let me know. And I can tell you how we can speak every week. But I appreciate that you got some value. You know, like I said before, this stuff is simple, but it isn't necessarily easy. And everything takes practice, right? And support. All right. So that's the sabotage piece. So next one, Steve. Okay, so this thing about community leader, and you know, we're going to reference Ivan Meissner's book, Who's in Your Room? Because he says, you know, be really careful about who you let in your room. You know, a lot of times I remember, and maybe this is this is a very old story, but when I was younger, I had a lot, I'm an entrepreneur. I had very, I thought very sound entrepreneurial ideas, even when I was 10 years old. And I remember I would go to tell my dad about them because I thought he'd be really excited too. Well, he was, he would ask me a lot of point. He was a business person. So he'd ask me a lot of poignant questions like, how are you going to manage this? And what are you going to do about that? And, you know, at 10 years old, I didn't have a lot of great answers. My sister reminded me, which I forgot that I always leave his room crying. And so I think here's the thing. You want to make sure who you have in your room. What I decided about my father is he would have been a great person to have around me now that I have a business and I have business questions. He would be fabulous. At, I mean, as a 10 year old or even early on in my business, having him around would not have been such a great idea. You have to formulate your ideas before you bring the critic in. The critic can be very helpful when you're further along, but you've got to be very careful who you let in your room. And at different times, it could be different. Um, so you want to think in terms, now you've still got the sabotage piece in there, Steve, is there should be something different here, but I, I'm just going to speak to what I think it should be. There we go. Thank you. Um, that you're, you're, the people that you have around you can help you with the sabotage piece. I think that's really important, but you want to think of the different categories of people you need. So not everybody is created equal. Not everybody is created equal. You might need coaches and mentors. If you think about that, you know, maybe there's a coach or a mentor that you've had. Anybody want to put that in the chat? I think that would be a cool thing to put in the chat. Who are your, who are your coaches and mentors? Who has helped you along the way? Because I think in terms of honoring and acknowledging that there've definitely been people in your life that have helped you out. You know, can you think of one or two, one person who's mentored you in the process of building your business? Any thoughts on that? All right, Steve, is anything coming in? Well, here come some names, right? Nicole mentioned someone named Debbie Sardone, uh, fellow BNI members. Um, Ali says, I worked with a business coach for three years. Okay. And there's lots of other people, Dr. Cabral, Carla Thompson, lots of great people, girlfriends. Um, you know what, Nancy, what about people who are like, you know, super introverts, which I'm like borderline, um, who look for like thought leaders uh, as mentors, like people like, you know, Seth Godin and other uh, famous uh, people out there who um, deliver really great business messages. Could you count those as mentors? Yeah. So I think what you're saying, there's so many authors and yeah. podcasts and mm -hmm. material that's out there. That's fantastic. You know, I think in BNI, they do a really good job in asking people to do CEUs. Like you can learn from other people and you don't have to say a word. I mean, that's what's good about reading a book. It's not like you have to discuss it publicly, you know, but sometimes I do believe that it's good to talk to real people. Yeah. It's good to do actual programs where you do have to speak and share your vision. Like that's how you grow. But, you know, I'm an extrovert. I think maybe I've been trained to be an extra, extrovert, but I think as an introvert, so many people love to read. I have a friend that I talk to regularly and he reads every day, mm -hmm. like something, you know, of interest, of knowledge. And he loves that. 
And that speaks to, you know, introverts, but there's tons of, but those people are in your community of support. Maybe you have a favorite author or business methodology that you really like and you study it. That would be fabulous. So that's part of the guidance. You know, then you have colleagues, you know, the team players. Now these could be people in your BNI chapter, but they could be, you know, beyond your BNI chapter. Somebody mentioned that their wife was a great accountability partner. So that would be a really important thing. Like think of people as colleagues, people that will help you, people that know things that you don't know, and they could be anywhere and everywhere. You know, and then your clients are also part of your community. When I think of business, like your clients are part of your community of support. These are the beneficiaries of what you do. So kind of when you think of it that way, it makes you realize that your contribution is of ultimate importance. You know, I'm not trying to train people to be the mayor of towns. It's like you want to be the community leader for the idea and the vision that you have. And then you invite other people into it or other people come into it, even if you don't invite them because you're so inspiring. Your business is fabulous. Who you're being is great. They see what you're doing is making a difference. And I think the important piece of putting this together is that when you have the vision, you've got the plan, then people are drawn to you. Like they know how to help you. They know they want to be part of it. And your vision inspires them to create their vision. Like they find their vision within your vision. You know, your employees, the people that really want to work with you and your clients love you. It, it's all like a wonderful system. And then, you know, we've talked about TLC, like teamwork, leadership, and communication. Having the vision as being the leader. Teamwork is creating this community of support. And then, you know, the last piece is like communication. How do you stay in communication with the people that you are part of your, your team here? Like teamwork makes a dream work. Wait a minute, I think we have a side that says that. Here we go. You know, a focused team of people moving forward to fulfill a clear vision. And with the tools that we've talked about today, it's usually hugely helpful to put all those pieces in. If things are going awry, and I always think distinctions are important, otherwise there's a lot of confusion, like, oh, it's not going where I want it to go, but I don't, you know, using distinctions can be very helpful in terms of clarifying, oh, is the vision not clear? Do we not have a good plan here? Are we sabotaging ourselves and being caught up in the wave and not doing something different? You know, or do we not have an, a cohesive group of people? I've helped people a lot with meetings, you know, that you have meetings that actually work. And that couldn't be a better tool for creating a great business. So what should I say in conclusion, Steve? Or should we, what do we do now? Well, we have another slide, don't we? Oh, 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 this I like. um, so, you know, one of the things that Steve and I conjure up when I come to speak is to, I mean, for one thing, I realize, you know, this is, we're just going on the tip of the iceberg here. If you actually do more work on this, it can be more per personalized. And that will be part of the personal growth that I talked about earlier. So we are going to offer a complimentary workshop on June 13th from 5 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. And so what should people do if they would like to participate in that, Steve? Well, uh, I'm going to stop the share a second and reach into my email and get you that link. Okay. That would be great. And so the whole point of that is, you know, it will definitely be a smaller group than this. But if you do sign up, we do ask that you come, you know, because we plan on you being there. And I'll go through the model more and do some pers more personalized coaching with people and answer some of the questions that people have. All right, I'm back in the chat. Okay. And here comes the link for anyone who would like to join us. That would be great. And if people have any questions, my contact information is there. I love to answer questions. Um, you know, my mission, my purpose is to help people be more successful. And I'm definitely on the on the side of personal growth. Like, how do people as business owners uh, move forward? And it's you know, there's a lot of area between your ears, and a lot of times there's things within that param, you know, in that domain that um, if you pay attention to, can make things better. Um, yep. so I'd like to so help with that. We have one quick question. Sure. What do you do with close family members 
who don't have the vision and impact you personally and professionally? <laughs> that is such a good question. Yeah. I should ask you, so what, what would you do? I mean, honestly, I think you have to think, I mean, for one thing, people in your family, you know, that is the biggest, you know what, I have to tell you, I'm getting a divorce right now after 31 years. And it's not necessarily because my husband didn't share the vision that I have. But when I start, you know, started doing the work that I do with others on myself, I realized like one area of my life that didn't work, and I'm not recommending divorce, but for me personally, didn't work was my personal life. You know, it just, mm -hmm. I didn't have the support that I really needed and wanted. So I think here's the thing, what I did for years that worked pretty well is I, I had a community of support beyond my personal family, you know, my, my committed relationship. And I, I worked a lot. I loved my work. My work was completely fulfilling. So I would say, go in the direction of what's fulfilling for you. And if something isn't fulfilling and doesn't work, address it in a way that you feel is appropriate. Because you know what? You only have one wild and precious life. You get to choose how you're going to orchestrate it and the people that you, that you honor in terms of taking them into your room. I would think it's a little bit of a breakdown if somebody really close to you could not or understand your vision, you know, could not get into it to some degree. They don't have to work to make it happen, but they should at least honor and understand it. Read. You know, I think sometimes you have to take that who's in your room uh, philosophy into your own home, right? Yeah. And say, all right, is this, if someone's not going to support me, then I'm just not going to talk to them about this. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, like even that silly story that I told about my dad, I mean, it's like I got really clear after a while at 10 years old when you have a new idea, don't share it with him because he's yeah. going to do what he does. And that's fine. Find the kinds of people that are really supportive. Even like I was saying about accountability partners, don't pick anyone. Don't have them do their routine on you. Start getting more discerning about how you train the people around you of how they can be with you and how they can't be with you. That is a, that is a good lesson in and of itself, whether it's regarding business or anything else. You know, we train the people around us. You know, just like I said earlier, what you have around you is a perfect readout of where you are. So it, it's 100% responsibility for how you're gonna design your personal life and your professional life. That gives you a huge palette to work on right there. And, you know, get the support you need in doing it. You know, it's hard to do that alone. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we are at the end. We hope we had a lot of people sign up for uh, Nancy's uh, event next Monday. And uh, was well, it next Monday or the one after? Yeah, it's one it's after. It's the 13th. All I can say it's the 13th. There you go. That's all that matters. <laughs> Just make sure you plan on being there the 13th, because other than that, I did you and I won't place. be there. You might be there, but we won't. <laughs> but we'll be there on the 13th from 5 to 6. And we hope you join us. There's always room for a new insight. So, um, And that's a, the first step in moving beyond the things that sabotage you. You have insight into what you're doing, and you decide to move forward. So please join us. All right. Well, thank you, Nancy, for doing your thing as you do so well. A lot of people uh, are in the chat saying really uh, fantastic things. Someone just said, where do I sign up? I'm going to jump through it right back in the chat. Hold on. Here comes the link in the chat. There you go. Cool. Awesome. And we hope to see you. Uh, so, Nancy, we'll talk uh, soon, I'm sure. Maybe plan another one since people are requesting an encore uh, of your performance. And uh, give yourselves a CEU. And we'll see you all next week. Take care, everybody.